Find a level area and lay out the body of the tent on the ground. Secure anchors by placing each elastic anchor loop around a stake and pound them into the ground or bury them in the snow. If the ground is too hard for stakes, you can tie anchors to rocks or other heavy objects. Build your pull set by connecting all segments and ensure each section is seated properly. If you're assembling a Chigori 2P, arrange the two longer main poles diagonally so the pull tips point toward the tent anchors and place the others aside. For the Chigori 3P, all four poles are the same length, so any can be used. Insert both main pole end tips through the black sleeves and into the matching corner grommets at both ends. Attach the remaining side poles. Start by inserting one side pole through the short red sleeves and into matching grommets. Repeat with the second side pole through the gray sleeves and matching grommets. Now connect the tent body to the pole structure by clipping all pole clips to the main and side poles and then connect the gatefold carabiners, ensuring the overlapping poles at these locations are locked within the carabiner. Zip the vestibule to the tent if it's not already attached. Slide the pre-bent pole through the pole sleeve on the vestibule and insert locking pole tips into the grommets on each side. Next, pull firmly and stake all vestibule anchor points for a tight setup. Open strutted vents as needed for increased airflow and condensation prevention. Add guy lines for increased strength and stability if needed, as a properly tensioned tent ensures maximum water shedding and wind resistance. Capart designed knife that was not 
and the museum at Western North Carolina University, which is where Kephart's stuff is. And um, I was resistant because I'm uh, essentially cheap and wasn't sure I wanted to spend that much money on a knife. And then my good friend Mark Zaleski, who runs Knife Magazine, brought it down here and let me cut something with it. And when I first had it and I cut something with it, I went, damn, a hundred years, never been sharpened, and it wants to cut. And the reason I got excited over this rather unprepossessing looking knife is the subtleties in this blade are incredible. And I've always felt that a flat, relatively flat handle gave the best way of figuring out how to index, index the blade so that you know exactly where the blade is. And it's rounded without being flashy. It was, uh, hand, they were handmade at the Cole Cluster Brothers factory in Pennsylvania. But it's a doubly convex blade with a, uh, a nice tapered tang and it feels live in your hand. It, it has a great feel, great balance, and it just works. It works as well as any knife I've ever had in my hand. And um, I want everybody to experience what I've experienced with this blade, because it works. This is the um, K-Bar iteration of the um, iconic Kephart knife. And they have been very careful to do virtually as good a job as, as get it as close as possible as anybody can get to a knife that was in production, hand forged one by one in a fairly primitive manufacturing facility where people were still pounding them out with a hammer. And it has the nice relief at the top, it's full height, full height ground which gives it a very slicey, a, a, a tremendous amount of slice. It has a slightly tapered tang, just like the original, which helps for the balance. It indexes extraordinarily well, and there's no place you're gonna get hot spots. You can work this knife for hours. Uh, many of the copies of the Kephart are based on the one at Western North Carolina University, because it was the only one anybody knew about. And it doesn't look like this anymore because it was sharpened to death. Um, but this one is based off the only known example outside the museum, and that knife is virtually pristine. So this is as close as I think anybody can get to the original Kephart. This is The Complete by Gerber. 
The Complete is designed for users who need a tool that they can cook, clean, and eat with that's compact, organized, and easy to transport. Not only is the spatula a chassis to hold the rest of the implements together, it's got a silicone edge for scraping and cleaning, got a serrated edge for light cutting duty, and its glass-filled nylon construction is rigid enough to be a real spatula and withstand high temperatures. The Complete also includes a fork and a spoon, either of which can be used to convert the spatula into a pair of tongs. Also included with the Complete is a four-function solid-state multi-tool that includes a package opener, can opener, bottle opener, and vegetable peeler. The Complete's nesting design makes it easy to transport, and its aluminum and glass-filled nylon construction makes it corrosion resistant. All that, and it also weighs less than two and a half ounces. The Complete is available in silver, onyx, flat sage, and burnt bronze. Organization can be key when it comes to setting up a camp kitchen. The Complete takes care of all that by nesting together and staying clean.